Welcome to Understand. Today we're going to talk about your new best friend, the Entity Filter. In Understand, your project's data is captured in the form of an entity, literally meaning a real or existing thing. These entities are defined as any unit in your project that Understand could gather information on. This includes files, classes, functions, etc and the filter will automatically recognize language-specific units based on your project configuration. For example, if your project has some VHDL files, you'll be able to find your packages, processes, and subprograms using this tool. The Entity Filter gives you immediate access to every entity in your project, with a convenient drop-down filter and search box to find exactly the one you want. Once you get in the habit of using it, you'll notice an instant improvement in your workflow, and you'll be using Understand like a pro. In this video, we'll go over how to access the Entity Filter, how to use the built-in features to find the exact one you're looking for, and the types of actions we can take once we've found it. Here we have a sample VHDL project open to start with. You can see that the Entity Filter dock appears by default pinned to the upper left area of the Understand interface. If you ever close the dock, you can reopen it by simply going to View, then Entity Filter in the top level menu, like so. Let's take a look at some of the ways we can narrow down our search for a specific entity. Say we forgot the name of the exact file, but we know it includes the word cipher. Let's start by using the drop-down filter to narrow our search down. If we change it from entities to files, we now have a nice list of all the files in the project. As you can see from this drop-down, we could also filter down to packages or subprocesses, as I mentioned before, and you can even filter by unused entities like subprograms and signals. Now, we could probably find our file here in this list pretty easily, but what if our project had hundreds of files? Well, we can also do a text search to narrow down the results even further. So let's type cipher in the search box. And there we go, we found our file. Okay, so now that we've found our entity, there are some useful things we can do with it. First, clicking on the entity once and highlighting it will populate the information browser. But as you can see, it was already populated, we could also right-click the entity to bring up the context menu, which yields access to even more information. From here, we could view graphs of our entity's relationships with others, rename it, and more. In my case, I want to see the references for this file to see how it fits into the overall project. So I right-clicked it. We're going to select Interactive Reports, then API Info. Drag that over here. And let's go down to Refs. And there we go, we can see there's two declarations in this file. So what if we wanted to refactor our entity? Well, to pull up our entity in the editor, all it takes is a simple double click from the entity filter, and from there, we can work on it however we please. This was a short look at the entity filter in Understand. In this video, we covered how to navigate the entity filter, as well as how we can use it to work on our code. Though this is a really simple tool, the Entity Filter is one of the most powerful and effective devices within Understand, and will make your life so much easier. For more information on this tool, or anything else in Understand, visit support.sidetools.com.